Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about Mount Rainier, perhaps the most iconic mountain in the western U.S. It's located in central Washington, and it towers over the surrounding landscape. The mountain contains more than five times the glacier area than the rest of the Cascade volcanoes combined. Mount Rainier is so iconic that for people in Seattle and the surrounding area, it's simply referred to as the mountain. But Mount Rainier is, well, shrinking. And it has shrank so dramatically that the mountain's highest point, a spot on its broad summit known as Columbia Crest, is no longer its summit anymore. And all that has changed in the last 20 years or so. So what's going on? To answer that question, we're going to talk to Eric Gilbertson. Eric's a professor in engineering at Seattle University, and he's on a mission to measure the world's highest points including mountains in the U.S., using cutting-edge technology. He calls it the Country High Points Project, and his results are pretty striking. But before we talk to Eric, I want to tell you a little bit about my history with Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier is a very special place to me. As a kid from North Carolina, I was just blown away when I first visited the National Park in 2007 at the sheer size of the mountain and then just how much ice it contained. Later on, in 2009, I would go on to work as a climbing ranger at Mount Rainier, living in a little hut called Camp Sherman on the northeast side of the mountain for most of an entire summer. Sandwiched between two glaciers, the Emmons and the Winthrop, that time at Camp Sherman was seriously life-altering. It redefined the trajectory of my career. It was that summer when I saw my first ice worms, did my first mountaineering in big, glaciated terrain, and it's where I decided that I was gonna go back to school, change my major, and become a mountain scientist. So let's talk a little bit about the basic geography of Mount Rainier's summit. It's a pretty big place. The summit has three sub-peaks. It has Liberty Cap, Point Success, and Columbia Crest. Columbia Crest has long been considered the true high point of the mountain and the mountain's summit. Mount Rainier received its first official measurement in the mid-1850s by a scientist named George Davidson. And after a few revisions, by the 1950s, the mountain's currently accepted height of 14,411 feet became the standard measurement. All right, so what's going on with Mount Rainier? Is it shrinking? What's happening to other mountains in the Pacific Northwest? To answer those questions and more, let's bring in Eric Gilbertson. Hey, Eric. Sorry, Hi, I'm nice trying to, to actually turn on. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks for hopping on here. Yeah. So you were a yeah. climbing ranger at Rainier? So I was there in the summer of 2009 from May to mid-September. So I was up on the top a lot. And so, I mean, that's part of why, like, I love Mount Rainier and it's been a big part of my history. So when I saw that Seattle Times article, I was like, man, I got to talk to this guy. And then I started reading more about you and was like, oh my goodness, like he is, this is a really fascinating project. And I'm not surprised that the rest of the world also seems to think so. Yeah, so may maybe let's let's broaden back out. What is the genesis of all this? How did you get into being curious about how mountain heights are changing and what are you up to now? Like how has it expanded? Yeah, so I started 2 years ago. It started with Buckner Mountain in Washington. This was a mountain that has two summits that are close to each other, and people had debated for years which one was the true summit. Oh, cool. With you first, the standard route, you hit the easy third-class summit, but then there's another one that's like fourth class, but it's a little farther and harder to get to, and no one wants to go and do that one. So it'd be great if the easier one was higher. And people have been debating it, and I decide I'm just going to figure it out. End the debate, because no one had measured it carefully yet. So I bought a theodolite and told my, taught myself how to use it and hauled it up there with a couple of friends. And we measured, okay, the harder one is one and a half foot shorter. And everyone was happy with that result. We don't have to climb the harder one. Yeah. But that got me thinking, what about all the other double summits of mountains in Washington that people are debating about? Now I could go figure those out. But then also I realized these mountains in Washington, a lot of them weren't ever surveyed. On the quad, they're just kind of like approximated with the contours. So I could actually figure out what's the actual elevation. So I kind of started a project to find what are the 100 highest mountains in Washington 
if I survey them super accurately. So I set my project out and I just finished it now to get to know exactly which ones are on the list and resolve all the double summits. Wow. So I just posted my results yesterday. So I use LIDAR analysis and theodolite and a differential GPS that gets absolute uh, elevation to the nearest like inch or so. Yeah. And Rainier was one of those mountains. So I yeah. wanted, naturally wanted to survey it, but also I had heard from my guide friends that it was melting down. Yeah. So if, some, if the summit changes location and it changes the value, I want to know that. Yeah. And that kind of got me thinking, okay, Rainier's melted down. Could there be other ones that have melted down? So I started asking people and thinking back and like, I thought there were four ice cap summits in Washington. And I later learned that there was a fifth, East Fury. So five. Oh, yeah. So all those can change elevation. So you mentioned a theodolite. <laughs> what is that? So that's a, that's the same kind of device that surveyors used like 50 years ago when they were doing the original surveys. So it can measure angles very precisely. So if you put it on the top of a mountain where you know the height and you point it to another mountain where you don't know the height, you can measure the angle up or down. And then you can use, if you know the distance between them, you can use trigonometry and calculate the height of the other mountain. And then you use LIDAR sometimes. Where are you, how are you doing that? So they actually, this past summer, USGS just published the last LIDAR data for the mountains in Washington. So all oh. the highest are covered in LIDAR now, in LIDAR data Oh, now. cool. So 2007, 2022, the LIDAR signatures of what's higher is very um, confidence inspiring. So, right. So that kind of, that that's a way to corroborate the results. So like all of those are consistent, giving the same, yeah. same relative heights. So that increases confidence. I mean, I'd like to go back next year and measure again, try to get data every, every year to kind of track the trend. Yeah, the, the rate would be really cool to start to yeah, piece because, together. Yeah, even from the limited data I have, it's like maybe six or seven data points. It's a, it's accelerating. So I have 98, 2007, 2022, 23, and 24. Your blog is amazing. You're pretty prolific at putting together these like fairly in-depth blog posts about what you're doing with figures and maps and everything else. So like a central question in all of this is like, why is Columbia Crest getting smaller? Right. Yeah. This has been kind of debated by people around here. Some like prominent meteorologists are saying temperature on the summit, it rarely gets above freezing, but that doesn't really seem to make sense because the UW Rainier Recreation forecast regularly forecasts freezing levels above 14. I mean, Mount Rainier's summit supposedly has uh, an ice cap climate, and an ice cap climate, by definition, is that the mean monthly temperature never rises above freezing. And I don't think that the mean monthly temperature on the summit of Rainier is above freezing anytime right now, but I, I would be shocked if there aren't more days above freezing now than they were you know in 2006 that's around when this really like 2007 maybe is when this really started to turn like yeah this like this this phenomenon of columbia crest shrinking seems to be 20 years old ish or somewhere in that neighborhood what are the other theories that about why it's happening there's some like scientific literature that they speculate that the uh, wind drift have caused the Columbia crest because it's kind of a weird yeah. feature and they think maybe something's changing related to that. I, That's I actually know. a pretty interesting theory. I mean, like I'm, I'm sure you've climbed up the hogs back on hood plenty of times. Um, I'm pretty sure around that time when I was working out there, the hogs back shifted and like that Ridge, it used to go right up to the pearly gates and it shifted more east somewhere, I think, in that 2008, 2012 time frame. And so it became a much worse access point. And like the recreational, like easiest route, people started going up the South Chute, which is like just a little bit west of the Pearly Gates because it became kind of the easier um, access point. 
So this report came out in 2022 that all the glaciers are melting. It seems like kind of a public perception. Yeah, glaciers are always changing, but like summit elevations, that seems a little more surprising to the general public. Like mountains yeah. should always be the same height, but now it got melted down. So it seems yeah. like it's kind of a different reception than glaciers melting. It's totally different. I mean, a mountain, an ice capped mountain shrinking because the ice itself is melting, which I think is the most likely scenario. But like the fact that these changes are happening all the way up to that level um, is really compelling and interesting. Like I wasn't surprised at some of your results of like El Dorado, like El Dorado is not that high. And I would expect there's some amount of climate impact happening at whatever, 9,000 feet. Um, so I'm almost surprised El Dorado isn't, the changes aren't happening faster. El Dorado. Oh, it melts about 10 feet in the past two years. Oh, wow. So it actually so it's melting is more than Rainier. Yeah. So it actually is melting faster. I guess that's to be expected. Um, yep. So, so yeah, well, I mean, thank you so much for talking for this long. What you're doing is fascinating and I'm very glad you're doing it. I'm very glad that I got to meet you. Um, and I look forward to following your blog and hopefully chatting with you again sometime about your other interesting mountain measuring projects. So yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot. I'm happy to talk again anytime. Yeah. Have a good rest of your day. Good. See, you. See ya. So the results are pretty clear. Mount Rainier's old summit, Columbia Crest, is melting, and it has melted so much that it's no longer the highest point on the mountain. So why is that happening? As you heard, Eric and I speculated that climate warming is the most likely factor at play here. Mount Rainier's summit has an ice cap climate. This term is most often used and associated with polar ice caps, so places at high latitude, where temperature for a single month never averages above freezing. But the same conditions can also apply to high mountain summits at lower latitudes. While I don't think that even today, the mean temperature for any month on the summit of Mount Rainier is above freezing. But I do think the number of above freezing days or time spent above freezing on the summit of Mount Rainier is changing. And that increase in the time above freezing on the summit is leading directly to the changes that Eric is observing. But luckily, we don't have to speculate. We can bring real data into this conversation and see what's going on. Since 2006, Mount Rainier National Park has been collecting weather data at a weather station on the south side of the mountain at Camp Muir at an elevation of around 10,200 feet. Using a standard lapse rate of 3.5 degrees lower per thousand feet of elevation gained, we can model the temperatures at the summit of Mount Rainier using data from that Camp Muir weather station. And this works out to about 14.7 degrees lower temperatures observed in the summit than those at Camp Muir. And so with that in mind, we can plot these data from 2006 to 2024 and see what kind of trend or lack of a trend is present. This plot's a bit messy, but you can definitely make out a warming trend over this record. But we don't care about year round temperatures. Mount Rainier is always gonna get cold. It's always gonna freeze in the winter. But what we really care about is what's happening in summer, those months when it's possible to get above freezing and actually melt summit ice. So if we replot the data and just look at those summer months, the results are pretty similar. We still see that same steady warming However, rather than looking at the overall trend, what if we looked at the cumulative amount of time the summit spends above freezing each year? We can actually calculate that volume of time. So if it's 40 degrees in the summit for one hour, that's eight degrees above freezing for that hour. And we can calculate that number for the entire day, for the entire year. What we're essentially asking is using hourly data, what is the cumulative number of degrees above freezing that the mountain summit is spending each year. And is that trend changing? As we can see, there has been a significant uptick in this metric over the past 20 years. And you'll notice that it peaked in 2021. For those of you living in the Pacific Northwest, you might remember the summer of 2021. That was the year of the legendary heat dome. 
when temperatures across the Northwest spiked to some of the highest ever recorded, massive amounts of snow and ice melted from the region's mountains, including Mount Rainier. And those record temperatures extended all the way to the highest elevations in the region. But we can also look at another metric to assess this trend, something independent of these observational Camp Muir data. The Western Regional Climate Center maintains a tool called the North American Freezing Level Tracker. And using that tool, we can look at modeled temperatures, so the modeled freezing level for particular points on a map going all the way back to 1950. Looking at these results, the trend is clear. There has been a rather significant uptick in the elevation of that freezing level, approaching and going beyond the summit of Mount Rainier only in the last 15 or 20 years, which directly aligns with that trend and summit melting that Eric has observed. All right, that's all for today. Mount Rainier isn't just shrinking, it's melting. And that melting is happening all the way up to its icy summit. If you enjoyed this video, please consider taking the time to subscribe to the channel and leaving a comment below. I would love to hear what kind of mountain research topics you would like to see talked about in a future video. Have a great day.